begin. Once upon a time, there lived a poor but beautiful orphan girl called Cinderella, who was adopted by her mean, wicked, ugly, fat, smelly, hairy, menopausal, nagging auntie. By all accounts, not a very pleasant woman. Poor Cinderella was made to do all the housework, while her aunt and her two fat, hairy, ugly, wicked, smelly, menopausal cousins sat around eating, farting, and giving orders. One day, there was a rap at the door. A message from the king, you horrible, ugly thing. We're here to invite you all to the prince's wedding ball. Can't touch this. Struth! Imagine that ball with the prince. Ha <laughs> ha! Brunhilde! This is our chance to become royalty. <laughs> Do you think I could go? You? Ha! Biffle! Listen, you little snot rag. Go and make us three dresses with plenty of cleavage showing. They call a tart from the French. Now! Where's lunch? I'm starved! So Cinderella had to stay up all night sewing three Christopher Essex imitations with enough material to make three circus tents. We're talking Maria Bonucci here. The next night, the terrible trio headed off to the palace, leaving poor Cinder's crying oh, at home. I wish I was bowling with the prince. Suddenly, there was a large puff of smoke. <laughs> Hello, Cinders. I'm your fairy godfather. Oh, what a lovely dress you're wearing. Yes, well, we won't go into that now, shall we? Uh, do you want to go to the ball, eh? Oh, eh? I'd do anything to go. Well, here, drink this. The fairy godfather had made a special potion, and as soon as Cinderella had drunk it, four mice turned into horses, a pumpkin turned into a carriage, and two lizards became servants. Oh, wow. This is really great shit. And off Cinderella went to the palace. When she got there, she was so pretty, the prince fell immediately in love with her. Hello, you are gorgeous. Come here often, hey? Ah, uh, you uh, want to come up to my room to see my uh, crown jewels, hey? I suppose that dances out of the question. Yeah. And so, prince, I'm sorry, the prince and Cinders danced all night. But as she danced, Cinderella was trying to remember her godfather's warning. Was it be home by midnight, or was it not to have sex on the first day? Hmm. Oh, well, time would tell. But just as the prince was about to make his move, the clock struck twelve. Ish. Oh, my. I must be off, or my horses will turn into mice. Ah, what have you been having? I want some. But yeah. before he could say, let's go back to my place to wiggle the weasel... Let's go back to my place I'm to... I'm sorry there isn't time. Wow. Cinders was gone, leaving a glass slipper behind. Oh, poo bum wee! The prince launched a huge foot hunt, and when he got to Cinderella's house, it fitted her perfectly. Cinderella! My dear sweet angel, oh, sit down, be comfortable, grovel, suck, lick. Oh, oh, shut up, fatso! I'm off to the palace! And so the prince and Cinders were married and passed a law that all ugly, fat, menopausal women were sent to Russia. So, the wicked aunt was never seen again. Except in Russia. Well, what an extraordinary story. And imagine having a fairy godfather. <laughs> Hello, Doug. Thanks, your wish. Oh, bugger me. Your wish is bugger me. Uh, Like two boils on the face of despair, they burst out in search of the missing subtitle that holds the key to their happiness. Follow the tragic plight of an orphan lad raised by turnips and his sweetheart Danuta, half woman, half beetroot in Bob Dan the Turnip Boy. Hello! The 1962 drama series from Bulgaria on SBS this week. Now, Danuta, my beloved, what luck to find an overflowing garbage bin in such a poor town. Yes, Bogdan, those years of praying have finally paid off. Perhaps this simple bin will prove to be a treasure chest after all. Oh, look, a moldy orange skin. What a great start. 
Oh, and here's a lovely ow! A lovely ow? What have you got, Bob, then? A multiple fracture of the hand, I'd say. Oh. Thanks to this rat trap. Stupid peasant! Oh. oh, what luck. A kindly secret policeman. Perhaps he has medical training. No, no, only torture training. Oh, oh. That's why I set this trap to catch a special breed of rats to torture. What sort is that? But we are not spies. I am Hog Dang the China Boy. And this is my... Yes, 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 I know all that. I listen to the stinking show and shit. Oh, if only I could afford a radio, I would too. Liar! All spies have a radio. It's just a simple matter of finding it. But I don't... Oh, oh. Ah, no radio, eh? Then what do you call this? Miniaturized transmitter, turn it! Oh, my second best tooth. Oh. And now it's time to hand over your tiny spy camera. You, your vastless turnip idiot but dog. I haven't got it! So what's this? What's this if it's not a secret spy camera, Mr. 007? 007, the name's Bob Dan, and that's my appendix. And only a spy could afford to have an appendix in a country as poor as this. Off with his ears! It's about the only thing I've got left. That's always your girlfriend. <laughs> oh, no! Not Jiggy Jig again! Bogdan! That's my line! That's all right, I'm not fussy. Oh, me and my big mouth. No, no, me and your big mouth. <laughs> oh, Bogdan, what will you do? I think I'll avoid secret policemen with mustaches and leather jock straps in future. Will Bogdan be forced to eat his words? And maybe worse besides. Find out in the next episode of the series that won the prestigious Smoldering Sock at the 1962 Barandai Film Festival. Bob Dan the Turnip Boy. The Turnip Boy. On SBS. Right after the poll tax riots, live from London. There is no alternative. Pay up or you'll all be sent back to Poland. <laughs> and take your salamis and gherkins with you. Walk. <laughs> Oh, oh, my leg! Oh, it's so big! <laughs> so
So ooh, ow, e, ah, out there, get down, funky, and and what do we get from Tex Smiley? Ooh, me leg. Walla walla bing bang, we love you. Because he's one of the celebrated gout sufferers here at the house of Ooh, me lifestyle. So he did Wishing the Gays, which uh, was a fairly vitriolic anti-Fred Nile rave. Oh. Recently, we've had a fairly significant uh, response to an anti-anti-abortion. Oh. Anti-ad, we wrote. Again, Simon Dodd scored a point. I wasn't going to play this because it's so contentious. I didn't want to create too much anti-Doug feeling on what was supposedly a pro-Doug morning. After all, Tui's have gone to a lot of trouble. <laughs> they sky wrote. Did you see that out the window of the oh, studio? Yeah. 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 I thought that was just a coincidence. Just as a coincidence, yeah, Martin? They, didn't they write, oh my God, the plane's <laughs> crashing? No, they wrote, happy 10th thing. Doug. 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 Love Doug. Doug, happy 10th. You I, love, I love Tui. And from Tui's, and, and, and they've, also, they've also gone to all the trouble of bringing in enough booze to make everybody here inarticulate and sick, and I'd like to thank them for uh, that. Uh, just settle down, party man. I resent that remark very much, Doug. You resent that remark? Yes, I do. Why do you resent it, Andrew? Well, I'm in no way inarticulate. <laughs> <laughs> Articulog. We should have a word for the day. We used to do a word for the day every day when you were here. What's your favourite word for the day? I think Witzel sucked. Witzel sucked? <laughs> yes. A Witzel sucked Wednesday. Yes, who could forget Tell it? Tell people what Witzel sucked oh, means. Fuck it if I can remember that. But as I recall, it's an emotional state uh, represented by a pathetic attempt at humour. Yes, I, I think so. Based a career on it myself. No wonder we were both so <laughs> fond of it. Yes. Um, Gardiloo is another I remember. Gardiloo! Gardiloo is the word people used to shout from Elizabethan windows before they tossed the pot out into the street. Yes, yes. Elizabethan shite. Yes. Elizabethan shite. Thank you, Mr. Smiley. Not a problem. <laughs> did, did you hear the anti-anti-abortion ad? We, actually, it's too, it is too contentious. No, oh, do it. Do it, do it, do it. No, there needs to be some sensible broadcaster on the wireless. What you're about to hear is a recording of the heartbeat of an anti-abortion lobbyist. That's right, he hasn't got one. Otherwise, he would have realised how callous and offensive advertisements featuring the supposed heartbeats of unborn babies really are. And what a horrifying experience it must be for those women who are in that unenviable situation of making what might be the most important decision of their lives to turn on their radio or television and hear that kind of crap. But then again, that's probably his motive. To scare them into going through with an unwanted pregnancy that could ruin their lives and the life of the child, oblivious to the fact that the world is already crumbling under the effect of major overpopulation problems. Alternatively, he could be hoping to turn public opinion, to sway the government into banning abortion, thereby setting back the rights of women by 20 years, and bringing back the infamous backyard abortion that killed almost as many women as it did fetuses. If he did have a heartbeat, he might have taken the quite substantial amount of money that was needed to produce and run a series of offensive primetime radio and TV commercials and spent it on helping starving third world children, themselves the very victims of the medieval laws and blinkered religious fanaticism that he's trying to encourage. Or better yet, he might use it to promote safe sex and contraception and thereby eradicate the need to lobby against abortion in the first place instead of wasting our time and turning us off our breakfasts with his holier-than-thou preaching and his pathetic little shock tactics. Authorized by the New South Wales right to get incensed over self-righteous, brain-dead religious fundamentalists association. Well? Hello, everyone. Matt Bumsender here, best of bimbo and greatest hits granny, debilitated by a decade of distributing doom, but... Returning by popular demand. Yeah. Yeah. With just a few of my favorite futures from the past. What? On the old request ends. Hit the jig wherever you are. Pippi moved you. Sagittarius, a chariot pulls up in your driveway, and a man in a toga asks if you called a cab in a previous life. Capricorn? <laughs> oh dear. Capricorn, next Monday, your wife finds a black hair on your lapel. On Tuesday, she finds a curly hair and... And on Wednesday, there's no hair at all. 
She correctly concludes that you're having an affair with the three stooges. <laughs> Aquarius, Tokyo, New York, London, Paris. You can't spell any of them, dickhead. <laughs>